Hi, I'm Ash with DailyMail.com and I'm here with Mr. Louis Theroux, who is, as I'm sure you probably all know, a, a very well-respected journalist and he has a new film out called My Scientology Movie, um, which is effectively about the inner workings of Scientology and the behaviour of Mr. Dave Miscavige, who is the leader of that Scientology group, and it's told um, primarily with people who... I want to call them whistleblowers, but they're not. Or, well, or do we the, call them SPs? I mean, uh, they're, they're definitely. If you're a Scientologist, they're definitely SPs. That being a suppressive person. Uh, the main guy we go on the journey with is um, called Marty Rathbun, mm -hmm. and he was no, the number two inside Scientology for twenty years, maybe. Mm -hmm. And um, what we attempt to do is understand the inner workings by recreating. Uh, the drills, the techniques, the practices, and also some of the alleged events using actors. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, Scientology is often uh, associated with Hollywood and with filmmaking, so it felt like a natural thing to use as a device. Actors, sound stages, we shoot all of it in and around LA, and under the guidance of Marty and one or two others, we attempt to uh, bring to life these alleged events and so that's the main thrust of the narrative. Now, what happened in the course of making it, as you'll know if you've seen it, is that then attracted the attention of the Scientologists, the ones that were not whistleblowers, the ones that are still active, paid up, believing members, and they then began making a film about me making my film. Have you seen that film? Has it? Come I don't out think yet? that film's come out. No. I was I was hoping maybe they'd have like stealth put it into the Tribeca Film Festival as, as a sort of competing film. That would be under yeah. a different name. That would be exciting. Oh, damn. Um, which is interesting because I have, I have watched the film, I've watched it a couple of times just to kind of get my head fully around it. And for me, one of the, one of the interesting points is at the end where, the, I'm not going to ruin the ending for you, but there is a moment where uh, Marty turns around and he says they will rue the day mm. that they crossed me. And he vows almost, he almost sort of swears vengeance mm. on camera. And then seemingly kind of went quiet. Because I imagine mm. you filmed this in like, sort of last year. And, yes. And... Since then, there doesn't appear to have been any, anything from Marty in from terms Marty, of this. In terms of, like, are they ruining the day? I mean, maybe he's playing the long game. Uh, I just, he was so, he's he's so angry, and I was like, what's, what's he... Because I, I, I thought he would come to you, and he'd be like, so I've, I've, uh, here is the evidence of... Because someone else in the film says that he knows where all the bodies are buried, so yeah. I figured that he would have something like that for you. But it, Well, we, I guess that will be in a film called My Scientology Sequel, <laughs> uh, which we will talk about maybe next year at Tribeca Film Festival. I do think, you know, Marty is this tremendously fascinating, he's the heart and soul of the film in a way. He, he put a lot of work into um, helping us and actually he embodies many of the, you know, although we don't have access to, you know, there are Scientologists in the film, but they are, filming me and, and kind of pointedly refusing to engage in, in my questions. But what, 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 what Marty has is he sort of embodies some of that Scientology thinking and as much as he's grown out of it and as he puts it, graduated from it, you can still see that side of him that is prickly and um, sort of super focused, kind of in a, weird, in a weird way impressive, like an impressive sense of composure and self-possession. Um, and the, so we have this sort of slightly odd couple, there's a slightly odd couple road movie dimension to it where as it goes on we bicker and he kind of calls me to account and he begins sort of questioning my ability to make the film and I begin questioning the fact that it took him 20 years to leave Scientology and what exactly was he doing when he was inside Scientology. So uh, when I watch it, you, you know, you said you watched it a couple of times, I've I mean, I've seen, you know, when you're making a film, yeah, I imagine. Yeah. Uh, a lot, you know, what I, what I continue to feel, sort of to enjoy, is, this, is the oddness of that relationship that I have with Marty. And it's very, as you, you know, as you say, without spoiling the ending, it is very um, volatile at times. Mm. Yeah, 100%. I, I mean, there's moments throughout where, well, in fact, every time, every time in the film, whenever you encounter a Scientologist, it's not in a peaceful, rational no. way. Yes. They're extremely volatile. They're very volatile, but then, and then Marty's quite volatile. Yeah. And at the moment where I decide to, you know, talk to some, 
talk, talk to him about some of these things that have been coming up. Mm-hmm. As you say, he doesn't, um, he doesn't, Respond well to that. He doesn't respond well. And actually, you know, there's a whole debate that could be had to do with how appropriate it was for me to bring up the things that I brought up at the time that I brought them up. But you see, then again, I would argue, maybe because we're both journalists, I would argue that it was your kind of that you had to do that. Because mm. at that point, you are saying, you know... That was when it kind of, yeah. the, kind of the subject came up yeah. when it came up. And there was no better <laughs> illustration of, hey dude, let's not forget yeah. that, you know... Um, it, well, I have to say, was... It was very exciting. I had always thought they, um, I'd, I'd known that they aggressively went after journalists, but I thought perhaps um, they might have figured out that actually didn't really make them look that good. To It's just an odd thing for a religion or a church. You know, you do a story about Anglicanism, let's say, you don't get uh, vicars, <laughs> you know, standing outside your hotel room or turning up to where you're filming refusing to identify themselves and filming you. You know what I mean? Saying, yeah. oh, we're going to call the police. Vicars don't do that. Right. right. Um, you do an expose on the Catholic Church and child sex abuse. Certainly, you know, Scientology has no monopoly on allegations of malfeasance, but if you do an expose on uh, child abuse in the Catholic Church, you don't have priests or bishops turning up filming you or, or hired by, um, or private investigators hired by them to follow you around, but with Scientology they do that, and to realise that, you know, this isn't just something you read about, this actually happens, and for it to happen to me, after reading about it for so long, was was a real gas, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Have they ever actually offered you a full membership? Have they ever said to you, Louis, you should you should join Scientology? Like in a, not in like a, a passing shot kind of way, as in a genuine, serious, Louis, you, you should think about joining us. Uh, okay, the back story to that is, I made a TV documentary a number of years ago called, um, it was called America's Medicated Kids, and it was a look at, um, you know, issues around prescription uh, drugs for things like ADHD. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting debate, it's a controversial area, and we took a, I think a balanced view that was in some ways critical, but in some ways supportive. After, because Scientologists are adamantly opposed to psychiatry, psychology, and, and, and psychiatric drugs, they quite liked the doc that I'd made. So there was a little bit of outreach from them on the back of that, where a Scientologist called me and said, come down to the Celebrity Centre, this was in London, sit down and let's have a chat. And then it was a followed up with, um, if you, you know, oh, I got a call saying, if uh, Mission Impossible 3, I think it was at the time, is out, um, come along and, oh, Tom Cruise would like you to be at the premiere. I think that's how it was phrased. And if you can come, you know, it would be great and, and do this and that. And I politely declined. I actually had a conflict. I was going to be on location, um, so I couldn't go. But it, 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 that I took to be their attempt to sort of say, we, if you, you know, want to be with us, we'd like to have you with us kind of thing. Which is so interesting because they're so, I guess, I mean, since in, in the documentary, there's, there's several moments where you, you do... Um, you do get legal letters from Carter Rock, no less. Um, I mean, after, afterwards, did they just did they, was there ever an attempt to subpoena the film? Was there ever an attempt to do anything, or was it was it literally just letters that were saying we think this is a gross misuse of uh, or a gross sorry misrepresentation of Scientology? Uh, it was a lot, a lot. Of le- it was a, a great many letters from both Carter Rock, who were representing the Church of Scientology. And then another law firm in Northern Ireland who were representing David Miscavige personally. Right. And because, you know, it's a BBC production, there's all sorts of standards and practices. And we had to, um, we didn't show them the film. Um, what, you know, it's just one, one of the Scientology MOs is to, at a very late stage, say, OK, we'll sit down with you and we can discuss, you know, things in person. At a point where you're, you've sort of been editing for months and you're maybe a week away from locking picture, where it would be totally impractical, you know. So at the last stage, there's an engagement, which is basically a stalling tactic. So we said, no, it's too late for that now. But, you know, we'll get, you, know you get a right of reply and we will give you a, a letter. We sent them a letter with all the allegations and their responses are incorporated into the film. Um, 
it, yeah, and then ever since then, it's been, I think, more legal stuff has gone back and forth. Sometimes it goes quiet and then it starts up again. I don't expect that it's stopped. You know, the fact that we're at Tribeca this weekend will very much be on their radar and they'll be taking an interest in that. Do you think that they're here? Do you think that they've I sent think, someone? You know, I don't want them to say, you know, I don't want to make them sound like... Um, Some sort of shadow government. Yeah, yeah. Like, like Night of the Living Dead, you know, like <laughs> there's people around us who actually aren't fully human, you know, the zombies, but you can recognise them because if, you know, if they pull their eyes down, there's a little, you can just see a little chip or something. Um, <laughs> it's not like that, but I do think, um, yeah, I've, I'm sure there'll be a Scientologist at the screening and who will be um, taking notes and... Uh, and it, you know, and I try and go on this journey and think like, well, but may, possibly that's just a normal thing to do. Like, if someone had made a film about me, um, well, and if I decided I didn't like where they were coming from and I didn't participate, I probably, if I didn't go down to see it myself, I'd probably send someone down to have a look and let me know what was in it. Yeah. That feels more or less reasonable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I feel like I feel like this is one of the great parts of, of the film is that you you do make every effort to make them kind of seem reasonable. Yeah. But that, but I guess that's one of the. And a things. lot of it is reasonable, yeah. and a lot of it is in the normal realms of um, what religion is. You know that fundamentally it is an irrational. It's a leap of faith. It's something, you know, that you subscribe to out of uh, feelings of the heart and not you know, a kind of analysis by the brain. But then there is this other bit where it feels highly dogmatic and potentially um, destructive. Which does come out uh, in the film a few times. Mm. Um, have, I mean, just kind of, if we, can, if we can move away from that, just talk about your career in general. Um, you, you've been trying to make this film for a long, a, long, yes. a long time. Is there anything left on your list now, now that you've done Scientology? I mean, I'm sure you, you probably would re revisit it if you had enough material, but is there anything that you've got left that you still wish, you know, or you still really want to do? You, yes, I mean, I want... There's lots of subjects that I feel like I haven't got to. For me, I suppose a big one would be um, what people sometimes call Islamism. You know, that wing, that far-out wing that draws strands of Islam, but... Uh, you know, turns them into a kind of poisonous ideology that justifies uh, bombings of civilians. It's, in some ways, uh, one of the big stories of our time, I suppose, but it also fits in very much with the things I've been curious about over the last 15, 20 years to do with beliefs that seem irrational, behaviours that are outside the mainstream or deeply taboo. You know, the idea, if, if you take, if you subtracted the possibility of having my head chopped off, I would, you know, would be fascinated to go into <laughs> Iraq and Syria and find out what's going on yeah. over there. Um, I tried last year to begin making a film with some uh, British Muslims who, you know, was more or less sympathetic to what ISIS or Daesh or whatever you call the so-called Islamic State, what they were doing. And... Uh, it just, I think it was such a heightened, it, was a, it, it is and was such a time of heightened sensitivities that it was very hard to build trust with the contributors and there was also an awareness that anything they might say, you know, if they were, the, if they were candid about how they really felt that they would be locked up for um, glorifying terrorism. And in fact, two of them were locked up, although not because of anything they said to us. So that one fizzled out. But you know, I would still love to do it. Uh, I mean, that I mean, that's that's yeah. The world's my oyster, is the way I see it. Donald Trump. Oh my God, please, Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. That would be incredible. <laughs> Donald, if you're watching, I mean, I know that you're a big fan of Daily Mail. If you're watching, please let this man, please let this man do a documentary on you. It would be the greatest thing. I would give you a fair, I would give you a fair hearing, and um, <laughs> just don't look at my Twitter stream. Any tweets that I said against you. <laughs> Um, <laughs> possibly my tweets were hacked. Perhaps I didn't write those ones. Or maybe your campaign manager retweeted it. Maybe your PR, can, your PR person retweeted it. My campaign stuff. manager had access to my Twitter stream. What is wrong with campaign managers? Seriously, they're just getting... Where are they coming from? Mm. 
back up. That's what I need as a campaign manager, someone who gives me <laughs> deniability. <laughs> and I'm too exposed. But yeah, there's a lot of stories. Um, it's, a, you know, it's a gift that keeps on giving. Humans show no signs of becoming any less um, irrational. We are all subject to the same, you know, drives, whether that is to do with sex or power or tribalism or, you know, religious impulses. You know, life itself is, 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 a, is kind of this um, bizarre phenomenon, you know, without getting too cosmic. And so that, and that's very much my area of inquiry. And do you, do you, is there any time that you've been in, in some serious danger where you've been like, I might not walk out of this? Uh, yeah, there have been times. I mean, I don't regard myself, I am not a particularly brave person. And there's war correspondents, there's plenty of journalists you know, anyone who goes on assignment to Mogadishu has or has done something far braver than anything I've ever done. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's places, there's locations that journalists report from where um, that's much bigger, much bigger deal. You know, or indeed, there are reporters that have gone out to um, the so-called Islamic State. In, t- in my own career, you know, I've been, you know, a few weeks ago I was doing a thing about uh, ex- people who are addicted to alcohol, extreme alcoholism in London, and I ended up in a flat that was, and there was, there was a, a basically a, men, a, a man, a mentally ill, he was a mentally ill alcoholic who seemed to be psychotic, and in the sense of being, you know, having some delusions, and he seemed to, for whatever reason, he took against me, and he put his arm around my neck, and I just thought. He, it just felt very scary and out of control. And we weren't, the kicker is we weren't even filming. Like it's one thing to take risks and be in dangerous situations where you feel, well, this will at least, we'll get something out of it. But this was all part, we were still in the phase of trying to negotiate the permission to film. Um, you know, so there's been, there, there, that was, I remember thinking, this is it's so bizarre that I've, I'm, I feel genuinely scared. I really don't know where this is gonna go next. And, and I'm in South London. You know, it would be one thing to do it in a yeah. hijacked building, but actually in, like, quite close to my own home. Um, I remember being at a riot in Lagos and guns started going off. I don't even know if it was a riot. It might have been a celebration. It was, in a sense, the, the difference is academic. But uh, people began shooting in the air, and I saw, like, guys carrying broken bottles, and I remember thinking, right, this is the moment when, if I was a, re- if I was a real, really tough journalist, I would be looking around thinking like, I need to get to the center of what's going on. And, and I had this strong impulse that I didn't want to get to the center of it. I just wanted to get to safety. Which is why you can continue making such fantastic documentaries. Oh, I you. very much appreciate you taking some time. Pleasure. The show. When is, is the film coming out in general release? or is Yes, it, it will, but I don't know when. You don't know when. I look forward to it. Either way. It's been a pleasure. pleasure. Thank Mike you ever so much. And, um,